So if you ever go diving on the reef, you'll notice that there's so many different varieties and shapes, but colours of corals. It's an incredibly beautiful ecosystem down there. And a lot of that is thanks to what's inside the corals themselves. So inside each of the bodies of the coral are these special type of algae called zooanthellae. They have a symbiotic relationship with the coral in that they get a safe space to live, but the algae is a plant and it has photosynthetic cells inside of it. And so they're able to convert the sun's energy into sugars that they can then feed the corals. These algae are incredibly colorful and that's what gives corals their beautiful color. What happens when conditions get really adverse, like there's a mass increase in water temperatures, those zooanthellae, they'll actually leave the coral cells or the coral bodies. And so that then causes the loss of colour and a bleaching impact. Adult corals can pick up algae again, and a bleached coral is not a dead coral. But when we continue the conditions and when there's a continuation of those warm water conditions that are really uncomfortable for those algae, they will not return to the coral. That means that over time, the coral will lose most of their nutrition that comes from the algae that they've become dependent on through this symbiotic relationship. So over time, a bleached coral will eventually die if it continues to have these warmer ocean impact events. And that's what we see with a mass bleaching event when we have just continued warmer temperatures. A bleached coral can recover if we're able to arrest those warmer ocean temperatures and get conditions back to a comfortable space for both the coral and the algae that live inside them. There's a whole ecosystem, one of the most beautiful, complex ecosystems on the planet. Reefs take up just 1% of the Earth's surface, but they support a quarter of all marine life. When we think about coral reefs under threat, we're looking at a quarter of all marine life also being under threat. So places like the Great Barrier Reef, yes, they're an icon, they have incredible economic value, but just the biodiversity value as well of supporting life for thousands and thousands of marine species. That's what's at stake. We want the reef to be here as healthy and as strong and as fit and as full of marine life as it possibly can be. We know that water temperatures are accelerating at an incredibly fast rate. And so corals cannot adapt fast enough to that change. So that's why it's important that while we also restore the reef, we restore and help the reef adapt. We restore with more resilient corals that can face off against what is coming in terms of these slow increase and compounding effects of ocean water temperature increase.